Let's talk about Andy Reid. We had an Andy Reid masterclass in this one. How about Big Andy Reid showing that he still has it? I'm going to start off with a play. You might be wondering, this is a weird camera angle to start off the video. This isn't typically how you do things. Well, I'm using this camera angle for a very important reason because this matters in this situation. What happens before we cut to where to play is, was actually part of this play. So watch what happens. Watch as Travis Kelsey. You're going to see him start to yell towards the sideline. He's saying something like, hey, what's going on? You know, you see him and uh, another receiver who's on that side of the field. They're just, uh, you know, basically selling as they're like, hey, we don't know what the play is. But if you notice, well, there's a couple other players who are just looking over in that direction. Pretty much everyone else is still in position. The main two guys who are out of position are on the other side of the field, and that doesn't matter. Them being out of position is totally fine because the play isn't going to go there. Instead, it's going to be a quick screen pass in the other direction. McKinnon is the one who gets the ball. Just a clever play there. Again, I don't know how much that actually ended up mattering. I don't think it really did at all. To be honest, I think that the guys on the other side of the field were still uh, prepared for it, so good job by them. But just kind of a funny play that I think happened there. And, uh, you know, again, goes to show just what Andy Reid is doing in this game. He's he's thinking outside the box, going full Andy Reid. Sometimes it was working, sometimes it wasn't. Like, there was also that play where they all ran around in a circle that didn't end up doing anything. But again, try enough of these, sometimes they're going to work. They didn't work every time, but they worked some of, some of the times. Now, this one was, you know, we got to talk about all of it, right? Andy Reid, kind of, what's the book on Andy Reid? It's Andy Reid is incredible at X's and O's. X's and O's, Feel better, if any better, when it comes to offense, right? He's one of those guys. But game management isn't always his thing. And I thought that he had a mistake in this one. I did. I didn't think it was a massive one. It's, you know, this is the situation. It's a fourth down and three. And they're at just inside the 25-yard line here. So, you know, 42-yard field goal. Or do you go for it on fourth and three? Analytics on this play suggests that, that it's a toss-up. Basically saying, you know, do whatever you want. Analytics don't always suggest one way or the other. So use the game situation here. Basically say, okay, do you what do you feel makes more sense? Going for it here or kicking the field goal given the players on the field and given the fact that you have number 15, feels like the obvious solution is, okay, well, in that case, yeah, let's go for it. I'm a believer in toss-ups in those situations when you have Mahomes are not toss-ups. Those are go for it. That's how I view it. It's not how Andy Reid views it. I don't even know if Andy Reid views analytics whatsoever. He's one of the more conservative fourth down decision makers in football. I think it hurts the Kansas City Chiefs. Obviously, I think he makes up for it with his good play calls, but they decide to kick the field goal here. Ends up adding insult to injury as this field goal is going to doink off the crossbar. And listen, three points would have really mattered, right? Had Butker made that field goal, which you expect him to make, it was an uncharacteristic miss in a big game. But, you know, had they made those three points, we're probably not talking about it as a dumb decision by Andy Reid. It's kind of a bit of results-oriented thinking, but I still like the idea to go for it, even if it could have cost you three points, could have gained them four. So that's just the way I view it. But now let's go over here. Enough of the stuff that was clever but didn't really do too much or the stuff that was, you know, uh, maybe mistakes. Let's just talk about the straight-up good stuff we saw from Andy Reid. There's kind of this, like, three-play situation that I want to talk about. That's one of the better things I've ever seen a coach do, and especially on the big stage. This was awesome. So what's going to happen is it first starts off with this play, which isn't so much an amazing coaching play or anything, but it's still worth talking about. And it still is a good coaching play. I mean, this is still Andy Reid doing some good stuff. It's going to be he's moving Travis Kelsey in motion. So he starts off as the outside receiver, the one closest towards the sideline. So when he's there, that means that it's Darius Slay who is going to be covering him. That's how that works. But when he moves towards the inside, they're now going to put Avante Maddox, the safety, on Kelsey, which, you know, listen, uh, most of the time, Avante Maddox, uh, excuse me, he's more of a slot corner than a safety. But most of the time, when he's on a player, you feel pretty good about it. He's a good player. He's not covered Travis Kelsey one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not sure if Darius Slay is covered Travis Kelsey one-on-one -on -one type of player, but you like him better in that spot for sure, putting his players in positions to succeed. But here's where it got really interesting. So going over here, okay, he knows two things now. He already knew going into the game, Eagles are a team that will like to switch when they're playing man coverage. And that means have guys cover different players. But now he knows that they're going to do it in this game as well. He's seen that, and he's going to use it 
really to the Eagles' detriment here. So this is Darius Slay once again. You have Kadarius Toney in motion towards the middle of the field. And this isn't just like he's slowly in motion. No, it appears as though he's completely going from one side of the field to the other side of the field. And they've even you know, ran motion throughout this game to get Eagles corners to believe that this could be happening. It's a third down and three here, right? So you got to make sure you cover Tony. And if Darius Slay in man coverage tries to get all the way over to the other side of the field, that's going to be difficult. The reality is he's probably going to have to switch and get someone else to cover Tony. And that's what he's going to do here. Watch how when this play begins. Look, he's calling for a switch. He's calling for what this means is trying to get the safety to cover uh, Kadarius Tony, who's going to be on the other side of the field. Then Slay will run over and he'll basically take the safety position. He'll play safety on this play and the safety who is deep covers Tony on the other side of the field. The issue, as you see on the screen, Tony is no longer running in that direction. Slay just got caught looking away. And again, I think it's fair to put some blame on Slay. He probably should have noticed this, but this is also good stuff from Andy Reid. And maybe Andy Reid even noticed, okay, you know, Darius Slay doing this stuff. Well, then let's take advantage. Maybe he saw it on tape in a previous game and used it here. I don't know. But either way, just so clever by Andy Reid. This way, when Slay finally realizes what's happening, Kadaris Tony has the ball in his hands and is literally walking into the end zone for a touchdown. Here's how they got the first seven of those 10 points. After a long Kadarius Tony uh, punt return, we then saw this, which is going to essentially be the exact same play, this time just with Sky Moore, and it's on the other side of the field. They're staying away from Darius Slay because they're like, okay, well, he saw that play, so let's on the next drive do the exact same thing, but on the other side of the field, and it's going to work just as well. I mean, you see the corner who's covering Moore, who's not switching on this play this time, but because of that, he's now making sure he gets over quick enough. So again, you see that one Sky Moore cuts to the other side of the field. I mean, just look at how... Uh, he's just so far open. I mean, the guy who was supposed to be covering him is on the hash marks towards the bottom of the screen, whereas Moore is well over the hash marks on the top of the screen. This is just, again, it's great play calling. It's clever play calling. And it's a bit ballsy play calling too. I mean, all combined, this is just what Andy Reid is doing. Patrick Mahomes is going to flip the ball to Sky Moore. They get a touchdown. And you know, Listen, uh, you have, when you make content prior to the Super Bowl, you pretty much have to talk about every little thing you can think of. One of the videos I made is, is Andy Reid kind of a playoff choker in a sense? He had been to, you know, prior to this game, nine conference championships, and yet only had one Super Bowl win to show for it. Now, I said in that video, I think if he wins another one, no one really talks about that anymore, and I think that this confirmed it, but what this did wasn't just get him the second Super Bowl that kind of puts the nail in the coffin of, no, he definitely, he, you know, you cannot even argue at this point, he is uh, someone who now at least performs okay in the playoffs in terms of coaches okay in the big games, but this wasn't okay. This was amazing. This was he clearly was the better coach in a game that I thought Nick Sirianni did pretty well. He made a couple mistakes that I might make a video talking about, but as a whole, I didn't have an issue with how Sirianni coached, but I mean, this was awesome from Andy Reid. That's what I thought. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.